And I want to thank our Facebook and YouTube crowd, the folks who are watching us on any of those two platforms this morning, or maybe you're watching later on in the week. I want to just welcome you guys, and thank you for taking the time to to view us, and uh, we hope this is a blessing to you. I would love for you to share this message this morning with someone. Just take a moment and click and send it to somebody that you love. Would you do that? There's just something about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus. Yes, there's something about that name. Oh, there's something about that says, listen, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Rest. Now, rest doesn't mean we're not doing anything. I'm not talking about inactivity. I'm not talking about sitting on your hands and not doing anything. I'm talking about acknowledging that God is always at work. I said, God is always at work. That's what Jesus said. He said, my father is always working. My father's always, you can't always see it, but I want you to know God is always at work for you. The children of Israel could not see God at work for them. All they saw was the Red Sea in front of them and the armies of Pharaoh behind them and a sun-baked desert around them. They could not see the hand of God, but I want you to know that while they were waiting on God, he told them to wait. He said, you just wait right here. Don't do anything. Just wait on me. Moses told him that, and boy, they're probably ready to stone him. You've got to be kidding. We've got to do something, man. We've got to put on the life preservers. Quick, let's build a raft. We've got to get all these people across the Red Sea. We've got to, we've got to, we've got to do something. And God says, just wait. Just rest. You know what God was doing? He was working. He was unscrewing the, the bolts and the nuts on those chariot reel, wheels of the Egyptians. While they were racing after the Jews, God was loosening the, the, nut, the, the, the lug nuts. <laughs> So much so that when he caused the waters to pass, miracle, to, to part, number one, miracle number one, allowed the children of Israel to walk across on dry land and not mud, miracle number two. And then when they got across the water, 
the Egyptians thought they could do it too, and they came into the water, miracle number three. And then he caused the water to come down on top of them. They couldn't move because the chariot wheels literally fell off their chariots. Miracle, miracle number four or five or wherever we're at. Listen, God wants you to rest while he works your issues out for you. But you see, I got to do it myself. I, I, I know what I'm doing. I can do this. I'm a pastor, and for my business, my job for the last 40 years has been to, I was ordained in 1980. Uh, my, my full-time vocation has been to lead, feed, and be an example to God's people. To lead, to feed, and to be an example to God's people. We've endeavored to do that. Glenda at my side, she's been an incredible pastor's wife. If you love your pastor's wife, give, give the Lord praise for her. Would you do that? Man. We're glad she's back on two strong knees. Titanium woman, that's what I call her. No, not really. And so well, that's what we do. That's all we've done. I don't want to do anything else. I don't care to do anything. I can't do anything else. I've tried to do other things. The Lord won't let me do anything else. And I don't know where I was going with that story, but it felt pretty good starting out. Michael, maybe it'll come back to me. Oh, I know what it was. I can... I can put a sermon together. I can write a sermon. I can, pre I can present a sermon. You know, I, can, I can do a few things. That's about all I can do, I guess. But anyway, I can do a few things. And it's really easy for ministers like myself to rely on their own strength and their own ability and to rely on their natural aptitude. Speaking skills, vocabulary, voice inflection, use of hands and feet, <laughs> all the things we do to try to communicate. It's real easy to lean on that and say, well, you know, I can do some things. I can, I can do this. And every once in a while, the, the Lord just has to say to me, you just shut up and sit down and rest and let me do what I want to do in your life. Man, I tell you, after all these years of following the Lord, I got saved when I was six. I'm 66 for crying out loud. That's a long time. After all these years of following the Lord and, and, and being a Christ follower, I am finally somehow trying to figure out when he wants me to rest and when he wants me to go. And I tell you what, there's a whole lot more resting than he wants me to do, than he wants me just to jump and run. So please, I just say to you, don't rely on your own ability and skills when God wants to do something supernatural through you and in your life. Somebody say amen, would you please? Let's talk about the presence of God being with us for a moment. King David seduced the wife of a soldier. I told you, the Bible tells the truth about people. Dysfunctional families, sinful people. Not all the characters of the Bible are pure and and, and, and holy and never make mistakes. David, King David, seduced the wife of a soldier. Got her pregnant. <clears throat> then tried to, tried to cover his sin. He encouraged the soldier to come back home, gave him a furlough. Go sleep with your wife. Go home. Be with your wife. He said, sir, I can't go home with my wife and sleep in the warmth of my bed <laughs> when my fellow soldiers are out in there in the field fighting for Israel. Can you imagine what that made David feel like? He heard that. Oh, grief. You see, it was, the Bible says it was a spring of the year when kings went out to war. It's the wording. It's the spring of the year when kings went out to war. And David is up on his, on his balcony, on the top of his house, so it's kind of odd. We don't usually get on the tops of our houses nowadays. You'd slide down. But in, in, in these days, in, in the arid, uh, hot culture, uh, uh, temperatures of, of a desert and so forth, this is, this is very natural to have a room on the roof and you'd have some shade up there and you'd take your meals up there. It was a lot cooler. Women even took baths up there because Bathsheba was bathing on top of her roof. David's roof and us other, the guy that house, their house is really close proximity. I don't know, maybe David had a pair of binoculars. I don't know. But I know that in the springtime, when kings go out to war, David did, thoughts are conceived from, and if we act on that lust, uh, then it becomes sin. 
James told us in his, his writings. So sure enough, David acted on that. Came sin, then when he he told, he told Uzzah, Uzzah to come back and was, was it Uriah? Help me, I think I just made a mistake. Is it Uriah or Uzzah? Let's look that up. Not right now, but let's look that up later. Somebody get back with me. Let me know. You got it, Skyler? You got it? Uriah. Thank you, a Bible scholar. I'm saying Uzzah. He's the wrong guy. Uzzah's the guy that touched the ark and fell down dead. Uriah. That's a good, strong name. Did you know Uriah wasn't even a Jew? Uriah, um, he, 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 uh, he, became a, he became a Jew. He was a proselyte. He was from another culture. He was from another religion. And he loved the Jewish people and became, you know, joined the army and, and changed everything and went through everything and was fighting for King David and Israel when all this happened back home and Bathsheba comes up pregnant with David's child. Oh my goodness, be sure your sins will find you out. <laughs> Is anybody listen, listening to me out there? So David tries this and tries that. Can't get Uriah to go home and be with his wife. So what does he do? He sends Uriah back out onto the battlefield he tells his commanders, he said, I want you to put this man on the front lines and then I want you to retreat around him and leave him to be killed. Sure enough, that's what he did. King David, to cover his own sin, committed murder of his, of his own soldier, a man who had not started out as a Jew and an Israelite, but actually was a proselyte and changed over and began fighting for the army, so committed to the nation was he, so committed to his own men, he wouldn't go home and spend time with his wife. And David has him murdered. Whoa, David, he's sounding pretty bad here, isn't he? He found himself in an Egypt of his own making. But finally he came clean and he prayed in Psalm 51, 11. Lord, do not cast me away from your presence. Cast me not away from your presence. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. David, in his repentance prayer, never asked for the crown to not be taken. He never asked for the kingdom to be restored. He didn't ask for his army not to be taken away or his money. He begged God for his presence. And I say to you, why don't we do the same? Why is it we go through? We call ourselves believers in Christ. Those of us who are spirit baptized and spirit anointed and spirit guided. Why is it we go through life not calling on God? Taking his presence for granted. Taking his Holy Spirit for granted. Let me tell you something. His spirit will not always strive with man. You keep rejecting him, and there's going to come a time when he's going to turn his back. Oh, I know. He's got a lot. He's got enormous grace for us. I know that. I know we're living under a dispensation wherein you can just about do anything and you know, repent and come back to God. I know that. Let me tell you something. There's going to come a day when that same God who forgives you as your Savior, is going to, you're going to stand before him as your judge. And you're going to give an account for the deeds done in your body, every one of us. We're going to give an account. I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning, but I believe you need to hear it. So here's my final point this morning. I'm sorry I've gone a little longer than I had planned, but let me give you my final point. Number three, make God's presence your passion. Be more like a sponge than a rock. In the ocean, a sponge just absorbs. 
A rock, a rock can't absorb, but a sponge can absorb. Are you going to resist or are you going to receive? Are you going to run from God? Are you going to grow hard? Are you going to resist God? Are you going to blame God when things go wrong? Or are you going to choose the right response and open every pore of your life to his love and to his grace? You see, hard hearts never heal. Spongy hearts heal. God says in Hebrews 13 and 5, never will I leave you and never will I forsake you. Look at this, Hebrews 13, 5. I will not, I will not, I will not. Three times in the original language, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. He promises to be with you. Let's make his presence our passion in our lives. Can you say amen to that? Stand with me, please, would you please? I will not, I will not, I will not. Leave you forsake you. So three things as I close, I want, you to, I want you to grasp real quickly. Cling to the character of God. See, God's still sovereign. He still knows your name. Angels still respond to his call. The hearts of rulers still yield at his bidding. Heaven is only a heartbeat away. The grave is, is still a temporary housing. He uses everything for his glory and for my ultimate good. Everything, that's his nature, that's his character. Cling to the character of God, the way that you know him. If you don't know him, get to know him. He doesn't want to hide himself, he really wants to reveal himself to you. Number two, pray your pain out. Pray the pain that's on the inside out. The only way to get that pain out is through your mouth. You've got to just confess it. It's time for honest prayer, fervent prayer, righteous man praying. Number three, lean on God's people, or, or C, lean on God's people. Lean on God's, forget the desert, deserted island. This is not a time to be a hermit. You know, in, in football, college and professional both, when a defensive player, a defensive back, a safety or a cornerback, that's what they call them, is, is on a wide receiver, and his job is to defend him. The ball is snapped. The wide receiver runs like a gazelle. Man, those guys can run. I mean, he's like 60 miles. I don't know how fast he's going. But the job of the defensive back is to not allow that guy to catch the ball. If he beats you, knock him down. Get a penalty rather than him scoring a touchdown. That's my coaching right there. Knock him down. Well, anyway, we call that being on a, when he got so, single coverage like that, we call that being on an island. Being on an island, I say we, like I, you know, I'm a sportscaster now. We call that, it's on an island. He's on an island defending. Okay, you call, why do you call that being on an island? Because it's all alone. Now, if the safety comes over, somebody comes over and double coverage, it helps him out. That's one thing. But when you're all by yourself, you're on an island. And I say to you, don't, don't, don't live on an island. God's not, crea God's not created you to be a hermit. Pray your pain out. Lean on God's people. Where two or three are gathered in my name. You see, what would, what would you do when you're, when you're sick? Does a sick person avoid the hospital? Does a hungry person avoid the table? You and I must not neglect the house of his people. Some of you watching me this morning, you used to be here faithfully. You used to be here every Sunday, every time the doors were open. You were in God's house. You've let the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches cause you to get away from God. Hello? Oh, we blamed COVID. We blamed all the, everything that took place, everything that transpired. Guess what? We were still going to Walmart. Just put our mask on and go. But for some reason, we couldn't go to church. That same coronavirus germ that won't jump on you when you're at Walmart, for some reason, it knows to jump on you when you go to church. So I can't go to church. People... I had people tell me, oh, when, the, when this, when this uh, pandemic's over, we'll get back to church. And some of y'all never have. It's so easy. It's so easy. Are you listening to me? It's so easy to get out of this, this routine, this habit. I applaud you folks who are here this morning. Thank you for coming. Thank you. I, I trust that this hour and a half, or this hour has been a time that has encouraged and blessed you. I don't want you to go home beat up. My Lord, the world does enough of that. The devil does enough of that, doesn't he? I want us to be encouraged. See, we know what the bottom looks like, and we know who's waiting for us in the bottom. 
It's the Lord Jesus. And he says in, in, in Genesis 28, 15, I am with you and I'll watch over you wherever you go. And I'll bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Come on, somebody. God's not finished with you. You say, well, pastor, I got gray hair on my head. I know. But just because there's a little snow on the mountain doesn't mean there can't be a fire in the belly. Right? <laughs> well, I got to retire. Well, how about this? How about you just refire? <laughs> I'm stepping back here. It's no secret. I've told you all a lot of this. And I, I've, this is 40 years and stuff. And I realize there's a generation that I, I can't reach. I'm, you know, I can just, I'm very limited. So the Lord has sent my son Michael and his family to us. And so for the last two years or so, he's been helping us in the church, growing, learning, preaching, teaching. I tell you what, when that guy gets up to teach, his old man sits and listens. And I learn, and I grow. God's called him to be my successor. Okay? There's no success without a successor. If I just, if I just, you know, if I just quit or we just close the church doors, what? Is it, what, what? What? We're not going to do that. But I realize I can't run as fast as I used to run. Michael can run faster. He can reach a younger generation. I mean, I'm 66. I can reach people who are up to 86, I think it is, 20 years. I can reach people down to 46 or whatever. Guess what? Michael's 38. So he can reach up to the 58-year-olds and down to the 18-year-olds. There you go. Now we got the whole spectrum covered. Because God sent him to me. And so, so he sent him, he sent him to y'all, to us. So my plan is to not retire. My plan is to refire. I'm preaching it to myself. Okay? But I am gonna be I'm gonna be stepping back. You've already noticed. He's preaching half the messages here just about on Sundays. He's doing a whole lot more in, in, in that regard. So Glenn and I are not going anywhere. We love this church. We're staying right here. Is that clear? Everybody understand that? You gotta run us off with a stick. But we are acknowledging our, our, our weaknesses, our age, and we're allowing the Lord to bring us some godly help. So when you see that happening, you'll know what, I, what we're talking about, okay? If y'all wondered, why is, he, why is he let Michael preach it so much? There you go. Now you know, all right? I believe that's the plan of the Lord. Hey, praise God. I, I wanna pray over this message this morning. Would you lift your hands toward heaven and receive it? Father, in Jesus' name, I've done my very best to communicate what you put on my heart for this morning, and that's just to let us know that you are with us just as you were with Joseph, and you turned it all around. What you, what Satan meant for evil, God, you meant it for good. You took the evil things in his life, the hardships, the, the, the pit, the prison, the palace, all those things in his life, and you turned it around for his good, and you placed him in a position to be a blessing to all the nations of the world including his own Jewish people. So Father, let that happen in our lives. May we acknowledge you're with us for good and not for evil. May we acknowledge, Lord, that you are working with us every single day, every, every moment of the day. We don't see you at work, but you are at work. God, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, everybody. Be blessed, have a great week, and uh, watch the videos on Wednesday night. We'll be coming to you by video on Facebook, so check it out.